What's the plan? We build a shoe line around just him. I need the greatest basketball shoe that's ever been made. Who's the player? Michael Jordan. Your motor is. If you're looking for some good movies to dive into this weekend, you're in luck. We happen to have a movie critic with us uh, who's up to speed on what's streaming and what's on that big screen. Film critic Brian Eggert of Deep Focus Review is here with three worth it movies that you can watch right now. Hey, man, thanks for joining us. Thanks for yeah, having me. Appreciate you having you back. Let's start with a new movie. This is Ben Affleck. This is Matt Damon. Uh, it's based on a true story about the start of Nike's Air Jordan shoe line. Here's a clip. Ask me why I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. Why are you in Wilmington, North Carolina? Because I believe in your son. I believe he's different. And I believe you might be the only person on earth who knows it. He gets the best roles. You got huge actors, a huge story. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Uh, this is, you know, this is kind of a brand biopic, and what I call a brand biopic. So there are a lot of these movies coming out, these brand biopics coming out in 2023. We had Tetris last month, and we we're having movies about uh, BlackBerry and Flame and Hot Cheetos mm. uh, coming out next month, and uh, it kind of is an origin story for these products. And while that may sound kind of dry and, and businessy, and not something that you're really interested in. Affleck makes this, just injects so much energy into this movie. As Knight? Uh, Phil Knight or whatever, the, the founder of Nike? Is right, yeah. correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he, uh, it's, a, it's a super fast paced, it's full of laughs, yeah. and uh, you know, you saw that cast, you got Matt Damon, Viola Davis, uh, Marlon Wayans, Jason Bateman is kind of the heart of the movie. Um, wall-to-wall 80s hits on the soundtrack nice. and uh, just full of really entertaining uh, fast-paced energy throughout this movie uh, that I think uh, people even if you're not interested in Nike or Air Jordan you yeah. it's it's a crowd pleaser okay good good yeah. to know that it's coming through yeah uh, next let's talk about another movie based on a true story this one about the search and the discovery of the remains of the long-lost king of England Richard the third it's called the lost king you haven't answered our calls, you haven't answered our texts. What have you been doing? You must be the Richard III Society. I'd like to join. Oh, hell, hell, hell. I'd like to visit his grave. There isn't one. His mortal remains are lost to history. I know I can find him. Okay, so is this is this like Indiana Jones, or is this just a comedy treasure hunt, or what is this? No, this is kind of an origin story of of, uh, of Richard III's remains, where just an average amateur historian uh, set out to find the the skeleton of Richard III. Interesting. And she was really discriminated against because she's uh, one, she's a woman, yeah. she's not a member of academia, and she had chronic fatigue syndrome. So she kind of related with Richard III because he was discriminated against for having a hunch, wow. and so she believed that the Tudors sort of did a smear campaign against him and um, made him into the villain that we know from Shakespeare. Yeah. So she's kind of, you know, Interesting. she's taking, you know, a jab at history, uh, you know, hundreds of years worth of established British history to, to you know, explore this idea. But also shares parody with his story, kind of. Yeah, yeah and yeah, she's yeah. kind of becoming obsessed with him to the point where she sees him in her daily life. Ah. Um, so it's very much a movie a, kind of a, against the institutions that that are against the establishment, uh, which is a familiar subject for uh, the director, uh, Stephen Frears and Steve Coogan, who also did Philomena. Oh, okay. Remember that one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so it's very much uh, another crowd pleaser, and uh, this one more of an indie format. Okay, how about Rye Lane? Let's take a look. So, what happened? She cheated on me with my best friend. You cheated on Tom? With him? Oh, that hurts a little bit. I mean, I get it. The arms are nice, but what does she even talk about? Are you just going to sit there and say that to me? Well, she said my arms are nice. I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's on Hulu. It's okay. um, another British indie, but this one is a romantic comedy. You know, romantic comedies for me, you know, they can be pretty formulaic. They all sort of follow the same same structure, plot yep. structure, yep. same technique. And Rye Lane is very much of that formula. You know, it's a, about a couple that sort of get together in the beginning. They have some conflict in the middle, and they they get back together in the end. You're kidding. Uh, but <laughs> it's got so much energy. Uh, th this director, first-time director, um, Rain Allen Miller, just a unique camera angle for every every shot. Uh, lots of colorful, you know, set pieces. I see that. Yeah, it's That's just cool. it just pops. The music yeah. is super fun. And then you've got these two leads, uh, David Johnson and Vivian O'Parr. 
are a relative unknowns. Yeah. And they, you know, a rom-com really depends on chemistry. Right, right. And they have such good chemistry. Oh, good. And uh, so even if you're, you know, tired of rom-coms, you've really not seen one like this. Okay, good deal. I'll definitely check that one out. Let's talk about the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Film Festival. Right. When is that? What's coming up? What do they got? So this is the 42nd annual uh, uh, film festival. Uh, they're showing 200 films wow. um, from April 13th to uh, April 27th. Um, they're going to be showing at the Saint, or formerly the St. Anthony Main Theater, what is now called the Main Theater. There will be some screenings at the Capri in Minneapolis and some at the Landmark um, in uh, St. Paul. So. I'm going to be seeing about uh, 20 films out of the 200 that they're showing, uh, and they're showing films from all around the world: India, France, Spain, you know, Nicaragua, uh, S South Korea, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, the opening night film is actually by a Minnesota native, Bill Polad, whose name you might recognize. It's of called course, the Polads. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, Dreamin' Wild is the opening show. Okay. Um, and then one film that I really want to recommend uh, that I happen to get a sneak preview of is called Showing Up. It's currently my favorite movie of the year. Uh, it's uh, by Kelly Reichardt, who uh, she's kind of an indie film director. Yeah. And um, it stars Michelle Williams as a sculptor who's preparing for an upcoming show. And she's kind of bogged down by um, some family drama and some economic tr struggles. She's just like a, a small time Portland artist. Uh, and then the biggest kind of headache in her, in, her, in her week is an injured pigeon that she has to take care of. And it's just this small portrait of an artist that's so well made and so well acted. She um, never does a poor movie. She, she's ever. so good. She's so good. She's always good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Brian, thanks. Yeah, Appreciate course. you coming thanks by. Of course. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again sometime in the near future. Uh, you can find more of Brian's reviews on his website, and we got a link to Deep Focus Review on the Saturday show page of care11.com. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for having me.